Hello, welcome to Government Lessons with Enigma. So today we are looking at uh, separation of powers. So separation of power we define as the separation of or division of political powers and functions among the three arms of government, the executive, the legislature, the judiciary. Now each body should be constituted and be involved only in the, in the administration of the department, of its own department. So uh, the idea behind separation of power is to divide political functions among three organs of government. So, for example, the executive should be only involved in policy making and implementation. So, some liberal writers believe that um, power is dangerous. In fact, in the words of Lord Acton, he declared that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So, Power is one thing that people do not really want to, uh, they don't want to play with. In fact, when power is in the wrong end, it can lead to tyranny, it can lead to dictatorship, it can lead to anything. So the, the brains behind separation of power is that political power and functions among the three youngers of government should be separated, should be divided. So each body should have uh, its own constituted authority, and it should be involved in the administration of its own department. So in the spirit of law, according to Baron de Montesquieu, we argue that if the legislature and executive power are in unity, we argue that there can be no liberty and freedom of the citizens of the country. So he, he believes that if the legislature and the executive are in unison, there will be no liberty for the people. Uh, he, however, also maintained that uh, if the same enact tyrannical laws, such laws will be executed, and then this may lead to tyranny. Why Jim Bowden, the French writer, believes that uh, um, he maintained that um, the, 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 the prince said a power should not uh, be with just one person. It's in, in some cases, power should be in the hands of so many people to allow um, execution, to allow justice to take its place. So what are the merits of um, separation of power? We have um, freedom and liberty. We have excesses of performance. We have efficiency in administration. We have checks and balance. We have stable political system. We have um, peaceful administration. We have it's democratic. We have absence of dominance. We have um, it prevents um, it's, it prevents uh, accumulation of power in one place, and then we have uh, some demerit as well. So let's look at the merits of um, separation of power. So like I said, freedom and liberty. The freedom and liberty of individuals are safeguarded where there is separation of power. The excess of performance. Excess of performance is removed on the part of the group exercising these functions. So another is um, checks and balance. Now, sufficient of power produces a proper coordination and function since each organ acts as a check to another. So stable political system. So sufficient of power ensures that there is stable political system within the organs, and then the organs are mindful of its functions in the society. Then peaceful administration. One of the goals of sufficient of power is to ensure that there is peaceful administration which equally produces what we call a peaceful atmosphere. So, separation of power is also it is democratic. It's an essential attribute of the political system. That there is absence of dominance. Separation of power removes the tendency of dominance. Then there is prevention of um, a culmination of power in a single one. So, let's look at the demerit of separation of power. It can delay and affect performance. So, checks and balance can delay and affect uh, each arm's performance, or let's say it can delay decision-making process. So total separation may not be visible. So we must agree that um, although separation of power is good, but uh, total separation may not be visible. Then we have abuse of power. The possibility that, uh, the possibility of separation of power checking the abuse of, checking the abuse of power and violation of rights of citizens cannot be achieved. Then we can say checks and balance. So, this can bring about the inability of government to take prompt and quick actions on matters that need um, quick um, and urgent decision because of the fact that there, there is a dichotomy of um, power and then one as of government has to 
vet before proceeding to the next. And finally, there is factors of rigidity. So a rigid application of um, the principles of regional power can hinder the smooth running of government. So separation of power is important. It is a good uh, political tool, but uh, when in the wrong hands, it can be used to frustrate the people and frustrate governance, and then uh, things are not going to be achieved on time. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to click on the subscribe button.